Okay, so this video is going to piss a lot of people off, but I want to make it because there's been something happening that's been pissing me off like crazy. It's been going on for a while and it takes place in the combat sports community. What am I doing? What am I doing? Pow, pow. Inside, inside fighting. Yeah, dangerous, dangerous martial arts. If you do combat sports, this video is probably going to piss you off. I don't mean for it to piss you off, but stay tuned to find out why. Okay, so first I think it's important to mention my combat sports background. I love combat sports. I'm a huge combat sports fanatic. I started off in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu when I was about 16 years old. I never stopped training. I'm super old right now, if that's any indication of how long I've been training. And I'm a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I've been doing Muay Thai since I'm a youngster, probably about 14 years of age is when I started getting into it, mainly because of Jean-Claude Van Damme in the movie Kickboxer, which inspired many Muay Thai stylists. You want this? Yeah. What about this? Yeah. But there's something that's been happening over the years in combat sports that I find is very unhealthy for the community. Now, before I, I say this, this specific phenomenon is happening with people who do combat sports for like a year or two years or don't even do combat sports and watch UFC and just hear things that are said and repeat them as if it's gospel. And this is, this is my problem. So if we're going to look at combat sports, we have to look at traditional martial arts. Traditional martial arts were very cultish for a long period of time. And the UFC kind of destroyed that phenomenon. I remember it growing up. I've talked about this in other videos. When I was growing up, I believed that crazy spinning kicks and the death touch, Dimak, I had the book, the Dimak book. Oh, yeah. So then the UFC came along and it kind of shattered everything. And then we realize what works and what doesn't work. Now we realize, this is an important note, what works in a ring. So I want to talk about the phenomenon I've been seeing lately in combat sports, why it pisses me off, and why combat sports are not the end all of self-defense and street fighting. There is something to be said about what really works in the street. It's not all combat sports. And I'm going to deep dive into it. I'm going to piss a lot of people off. So stay tuned, and if you're pissed off, leave a comment below, but still give me a like because it helps my engagement and I'm trying to grow this channel. Speaking of that, if you watch this channel, please like and subscribe and share it with your friends. Thank you very much. So here's what I've been seeing online a lot. I watch videos of incredible martial arts demonstrations. Now, outside of Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, boxing, wrestling, or MMA, any time a demonstration is done, and I forgot to include Sambo because of Khabib. Ever since Khabib, all of a sudden Sambo is cool too. But outside of these core MMA martial arts, these martial arts that go into MMA, you're not doing one of those martial arts. Anytime there's a demonstration, anytime there's a conversation about it, anytime it's brought up, there's always someone there. And I'm talking about on Facebook or Instagram, anytime there's a beautiful demonstration, you look at the comments, there are Tons, like I'm talking about the overwhelming majority of comments will be bashing that system. They'll be bashing that traditional style. As long as it's not one of those styles, it equals bad. And I'll see things like, go try it out in a ring. Uh, I bet it doesn't work. All that fancy stuff fails in the ring. All that fancy stuff won't work in the street. And a lot of the time, it's not even fancy stuff. That's a crazy thing to me. It's stuff that you would learn if you were a good martial artist, even in terms of fundamentals. Even for MMA, it's just that these people haven't been training very long. I don't know any black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu who goes out and comments like this online. I don't know anyone who's been doing Muay Thai for 10, 15 years who looks at other styles and doesn't see the benefit in them. It's always new, younger martial artists or guys who are watching UFC and they've, they've seen a triangle choke and now they think they know how to do it. it it's like it's this phenomenon that pisses me off. It's this cult phenomenon that used to exist in traditional martial arts that got transferred into MMA-based combat sports styles. And now everyone who just starts off in those styles is somehow decked out in 42 jiu-jitsu t-shirts every day. They have a jiu-jitsu duffel bag. They have a jiu-jitsu backpack. And I'm saying this as a black belt. I went through this phase. When I was a blue belt, I became a jiu-jitsu maniac. I was obsessed with it. 
And I started wearing jujitsu t-shirts to announce to the world I'm training jujitsu. And by the time I hit purple belt, that had worn off. By the time I hit black belt, I don't talk about it to anyone anymore. I train because I love it. I don't care to prove anything to anyone. And so it, it's this weird thing that I believe really kind of as traditional martial arts died and we saw what worked in the ring. And even that has changed over the years. Note, because... Joe Rogan would be bashing front kicks and he would say like, oh, those karate techniques don't work and all this crazy stuff. The second, you know, you have Stephen Wonderboy Thompson pulling stuff off or the second you have George St. Pierre pulling stuff off or Leona Machida, all of a sudden he's like, wow, Shotokan's really impressive, right? Or Anthony Pettis doing a crazy spin kick or Barbosa, all of a sudden spin kicks work. The front kick suddenly works when it's Anderson Silva doing it to Vitor Belfort. So these moves that people claim don't work for years suddenly work from a traditional martial art once they're pulled off in the ring. And then everyone's a fanboy of them. And so it's this cult mentality that I'm just so tired of. Now, I want to dive in to number one. As I just said, stop talking about combat sports as if they're the end all of everything. Combat sports are optimized for the ring. There will be an evolution in combat sports where more traditional techniques, including things from capoeira, from, from styles that you bash, even from Wing Chun, that will slowly integrate into the system as fighters continue to evolve and improve over the years. It's a new sport, and those small subtleties that are picked up in traditional martial arts will eventually transfer over and will benefit fighters. Now, that doesn't mean that the best martial arts for the ring aren't still going to be things like Muay Thai, like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, like Sambo, wrestling, boxing. They have fundamental values in them because they are sport-based and the rules of those sports complement the rules of MMA. But this is the real point I want to get to. MMA is not street fighting. Jiu-Jitsu is not street fighting. Jiu-Jitsu is far less street fighting than MMA is street fighting. And yet I see people talking about it like it's the best thing in the world for self-defense. I'm not going to talk about why Jiu-Jitsu is not good for self-defense today specifically. I'm going to make another video on that because I have a lot of qualms having done jiu-jitsu for, like I said, 25 years and seeing kind of how it's become so sport-based, it's very, very hard to find a good jiu-jitsu self-defense school. I still think it has wonderful attributes, but you're going to bear and bolo in training. You're going to try and bear and bolo in the street. And I hate when people are like, no, I'm good enough not to bear and bolo in the street. If you're training a bear and bolo every day in the gym, that's what you're going to do in a street self-defense situation. If you're not training to check punches and block punches in your guard in the gym and you're grabbing grips with the gi, you're not going to be equipped in a street self-defense situation. But again, I'll deep dive into that in a later date. What I want to talk about here is combat sports in general and MMA more specifically. Why? Because MMA is usually the reference point for everything nowadays of what works and what doesn't work. And the most important fundamental difference between self-defense, and I've taught self-defense, I've trained with some of the best self-defense instructors in the world. I consider myself to be a very good close quarter combat self-defense street fight kind of oriented martial artist. Uh, and I've been in fights, and how different they are than an MMA match or MMA sparring. And I'm going to jump into the specifics of it. And they all come down to variables. So the first thing that happens when you're training MMA, the variables are vastly different than in a street fight in the sense that you know what the variables are. So what do I know in a street fight? I know that I'm fighting a trained fighter. One, I know that he's unarmed. Two, I know that there's a ref. Three, I know that the ground is not hard like concrete. Four, I know the environment. There are no environmental factors that I'm going to worry about. I'm not going to worry about hitting a chair or a bar if the guy picks me up or pushes me back. I'm not going to worry about getting knocked into a, you know, uh, like a street post. I have no idea what I'm talking about. But those are the just random things around you. Someone picking up a bottle. And then also, you know you are only fighting one person. Now, the other factor here is you know the intent of that person is not to end your life. You might, in many ways, fighters talk about it. Yeah, I'm there to kill him. But in the end of the day, there's a ref there to protect you. And you know that if they choke you out, they're going to not kill you. No one has died in an MMA match from being rear naked choked. I'm sure there have been deaths from being, being hit. In boxing, it happens. But the intention of the person coming in is to win the fight. If they could do that without killing you, they will. The intention in a street fight is completely unknown. The variable is unknown in a street confrontation. So let's just look at these in more detail. When you don't know who you're fighting, there is a psychological difference. And the dynamic of a street fight is that there is an aggressor normally, or not a street fight, but a self-defense situation. There is normally an aggressor and a victim. And if you are the person being attacked, 
there is the psychological factor of being a victim, even if you're very well trained. And I'll explain why. When you go into an MMA match, it's very rare that someone will charge you into your face for a blitz for 10, 15 seconds as hard as they can to try and damage you any way they can with whatever they have to just destroy you. What they will do is because they're better trained, which comes at an advantage to both fighters, is they will gauge distance. And you see a lot of street fights happen in different ranges compared to what they happen in the ring. So a, a fighter who is well-trained will gauge distance, will not rush in because they don't want to get knocked out themselves, and will not kind of come with that forward insane aggression, which will gas them out because they know they have to fight over rounds. A street fight or a self-defense situation is there to end you. They are trying to end you more often than not. And they're trying to damage you very quickly or to impose their will on you very, very quickly. And so training for that is a different kind of training than training for MMA. And I've done a lot of sparring. And when you spar, you kind of play range. And you see a lot of guys kind of being relaxed, playing out at range. They'll jab. They'll play with their jab. And everyone always says in fighting, the most important thing is your jab, your range. You know, now we're starting to see a lot of teep kicks, a lot of front kicks, kind of keeping people at range, leg kicks, calf kicks. In a street fight, the risk to reward for playing at range is very different than in an MMA match. In an MMA match, I'm there to hurt you even if I get hurt back. In a, in a self-defense situation, I'm there to neutralize the threat however I can while also protecting myself as much as I can. In other words, I need to be able to protect my motor because the risk versus reward, the consequence for screwing up is not me being knocked out, it's potentially me being killed because after I get knocked out, that guy might stomp on my head for 10 minutes and there's no ref there to stop him. And I'll have brain damage and die in the hospital because I hit my head on the concrete or whatever that thing is. So it's a different consequence to losing. And when they, you deal with that kind of heavy forward aggression, and Anthony Smith said this, he said the hardest fight he had was when someone broke into his house. He said it was a different energy, a different mentality. And he said that was a 170 pound crackhead or whatever who came into his house. He's like, a, he's a big dude. He probably walks around well over 210. And this is a guy who came into his house and gave him a fight because it's psychologically very different. Now, additionally, on top of that, so when I train self-defense, I don't play. I don't play at that range. I don't touch you with my jab. I don't even throw punches for self-defense training. Here's what I do. I have someone put on gloves, MMA gloves, and I tell them, I don't, I don't want to know if you have a knife. You might have a shock knife on you. You might have a rattan stick, which we're going to treat as a, as a, uh, like a, a bat. And you might have a friend. There's other people in, in the class. And I just need you to come at me with real aggression. Scare me with it. And I have to cover up. And, and I don't want to know it's coming. It has to be a surprise. And I, and I want to cover up, hug my head. And I've talked about this before, the rhino. And just protect my motor and get close enough to you so that I don't get knocked out. And I don't get stabbed. I, don't get, I just can get close and start clinch fighting you and taking you into the ground. And that is more often than not a more effective way to train for street fighting. But what you get into in MMA sparring is a lot of this kind of like tap play or like I'll come in, I'll move, footwork, boom, boom, boom. And that it's not a reality on the street. It's not a reality in a self-defense situation. So a lot of your sparring that you're doing is not directly translatable and sometimes builds habits that you might get hit back and you don't want to take those chances. Again, when the reward is not worth the risk. Additionally, Takedowns are very different when you're on concrete. And I'm a, I'm again, I'm a, I'm a grappler by nature. I love grappling. But I also understand that when I hit the concrete, I have to train my takedowns differently. And this was something I was doing for a long time. And there's a, a really good jiu-jitsu guy who told me, he's like, you know, you're, you're, I have a more kind of traditional freestyle shot. So I would drop my knee to the ground and shoot him. I'd shoot him real quick. Boom. And I like to get real low. I'm not a tall guy. I can get under your hips. I can really generate a lot of power. And when I drop to one knee, I can drive in much harder. And so I had a very low, low forward kind of old school American shot where I wouldn't even cut the angle. I drive forward and press you. And anyway, what the reality is, I actually did in a fight deal with someone who was a drunk guy. When your knee hits the ground, it pretty much feels like it's going to shatter. And when you take someone down with, let's say, a double or double underhooks, right? So it's like a double underhooks and I slam you. I might end you. I might win that just because I slammed you into the ground. But if you land on your back, not the back of your head, or if you survive in any way, and my elbow cracks into the ground, and again, I've seen this happen too, someone's elbow get completely shattered, completely shattered on a takedown on concrete when they did the takedown 
and their elbow hit the ground before the guy. And it shattered. I don't think their arm will ever be healthy again. So there's a lot of things that happen on the ground when you're dealing with concrete that are very, very different. Vice versa, if I'm on the ground and it's I'm and you're on top of me and you're in my guard, I'm not going to play the same type of guard I would play in MMA. I don't need my head taken and slammed into the concrete. It's a different energy. And unless you're training for that stuff, you will not know how to deal with it. Unless you're training your takedowns for the street, the reality is it will be different when you're on the street. You will fight how you train. You might injure yourself because you believe MMA is the best thing in the world or your grappling is the best thing in the world and you don't need to cross train or, or adapt it for self-defense and you bash every martial art that you see. It, it's just become so obnoxiously arrogant to me and delusional. Um, I, I, and again, so there's numerous factors I can get into. Those are some of the major ones. Again, the ma- another major one, and, and this is another thing that pisses me off, is people say, why even bother training for a knife? You'll never defend yourself with a knife. If there's multiple attackers, you're dead no matter what. And I'm like, you know what, if my statistical chance, and again, I've been doing stick fighting, I've been, I'm a guru in Filipino martial arts, I've trained Filipino martial arts most of my life, we did very hard sparring in Filipino martial arts, shock knife, dog brother style sparring where you only have a headgear on, even though it wasn't a dog brother system that I trained, that's how we sparred, mainly because my teacher couldn't afford the gear back then, and uh, it was very aggressive, and it taught you, I'm telling you, it made you better at defending against a weapon. I don't care what people say. Now, did it guarantee me that I'm going to win against a weapon? Would I want to fight someone with a knife? No, but I'd rather have a statistically higher chance of survival in that situation. If my chances went from 90% chance of being killed to 75, and I had to train for that, that was worth it to me. There are no guarantees in fighting, especially not in the street, especially not when it's self-defense. You train for statistical advantages. So when I'm saying you can fight multiple people... No, you can't effectively fight 10 guys coming at you. It's not going to happen, but you're training to be able to have the best options in that situation so that you go from a 95% chance of losing to a 85% chance of losing. And that 10% is huge when it comes down to your life. You take that 10% and you don't bash it just because it's harder to fight against multiple people. And so there's been this huge dismissal of a lot of effective training from traditional martial arts, there's been this, again, arrogant, down-talking about it. And I think the modern-day, younger MMA combat sports community, especially guys who just watch UFC or go to five jiu-jitsu classes and think they're badass now, need a kick in the ass. They need to wake up and learn that's not reality. And uh, I know it's a little bit harsh in this video. I'll, you know what? Just to end the video on a good note, I'm going to say all the wonderful things that MMA and combat sports give you. So combat sports, in my opinion are one of the best and most effective supplemental tools, if you made it this far in the video, for self-defense. And I know there's already a million people who've left negative comments and are pissed off that I made this video. But I do think there's great benefit to training uh, MMA, into training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, into training those systems. Again, as long as you cross-train and then modify your training to also be effective in the street. It's- okay, I ranted so long that my camera died. So you get the hint. You get the point. I don't know what hint. All right, I ranted so long that my camera died, so please like and subscribe. I hope you like this video. Like I said, I still do believe there's an incredible immense amount of good in combat sports, and I will do them until the day I die. So keep training your combat sports. Just don't be a douchebag about it.